In this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between continuous functions and uniformly continuous functions. So first we're going to discuss continuous functions. If a function is continuous if for every point in the domain, we can make the images of that point and another point arbitrarily close if we move the other point close enough to our given point. And visually, this is what it means. We have a function, we're going to call it f. We have a point, we're going to call it p0, that's our fixed point. And the image of that point is going to be f of p0. So the y value, uh, another way of saying is that an image or a mapping. We have another point we're going to call p. And the image of that point is going to be f of p. And we want to examine the circumstances when uh, f of p is going to be within a certain distance of f of p0. That the images are going to be within a certain distance of each other. And that distance is going to be called epsilon. And a function is continuous if we can always find a delta, which is a distance that if the p is within delta of p0, in other words, if p is close enough to p0 by delta, then we know that the images f of p and f of p0 are within epsilon of each other. So the terminology is this. We want the distance of the images to be less than epsilon, um, and epsilon stands for error, or used to be called error, because once you map it, uh, these two points are going to be a little bit off of each other. How much are they off? Um, that was why it was called error back in the day. And to accomplish this, the distance of the points must be less, between the points, p and p0, must be less than delta. And we can view this visually by moving the point along the curve. As long as the point uh, is within delta of p0, uh, as long as p is within delta of p0, we know that um, f of p is going to be within epsilon of f of p0. And a function is continuous if for every point in the function, and for every epsilon we can find even smaller epsilons, this is the case. So um, as we finish this animation, uh, we can do this other instance. Um, in this case, we pick the smaller epsilon. In other words, we're trying to minimize the distance between the images even more. And in this case, we can also find another delta um, that works in this particular situation. The delta is, again, going to be smaller. But we know that as long as the difference between the distance between p and p0 is less than delta, we know the distance between the images, f of p and f of p0, is going to be less than epsilon. So that's the definition of um, continuous. So a function is continuous if for a given point, uh, and for all points in the function, for any epsilon, we can find some delta, such that if the distance of the points is less than delta, the distance of the images is going to be less than epsilon. Now, how does this differ from uniform continuity? Well, a function is uniformly continuous uh, if we don't take a fixed point and then find, uh, see if we can always find a delta for every epsilon, instead, um, we need to see if it works for every pair of points in the domain. And the best way is to show the visual example. So in this case, uh, we want to guarantee that the images of those two points fall within epsilon. And we have a delta that if those points are going to be always between in the delta range, then we know that the images are going to be fall in the epsilon range. But it's not enough to just show it for those two points. We have to show it for every point in the function. So in this case, we have another two points further down in the function, and we have to guarantee that if they're in, within delta, then the images are going to be within epsilon. And again, we find this another two points, another area of the curve. Uh, we need to make sure that in that range, if the two points are within delta of each other, then the images are going to be within epsilon of each other. Um, so a place where you could um, see the difference clearly is in a counterexample. Uh, so this is the graph f of x is equal to 1 over x. Um, and if we have two points here, and suppose that our fixed point was the blue one and the floating one was the red one, um, then it's very clear that uh, as long as they are within um, delta of each other, as long as the red point is within delta of the blue point, then it could fall within epsilon. Even if we made epsilon smaller, we can make a delta small enough to prove that it's continuous for every part of the domain here. Uh, however, it is not uniformly continuous because this given uh, delta will not work for other um, for the same epsilon in other areas of the curve. So, for example, suppose we use the same delta in order to guarantee that our points will be within that epsilon uh, is the same epsilon. Excuse me. In order to guarantee that our points will be within the same epsilon, delta um, will have to be much smaller. The distance between our two points on the x-axis will have to be much smaller than in this case. And in fact, there is no delta, however small, that'll work for every area of this curve. So in other words, for a given epsilon, which is our epsilon in this graph, there is no delta 
that'll work for all the points in the graph. The delta will have to become smaller and smaller and smaller the further left we go in order to guarantee that the images of our two points within that delta range are going to be less than epsilon.